Hello. Welcome to the first February meeting of the Elbow Sister Association. Um, if you've had a chance to look at the AHA Guide to Historic Elements, you know that Errol is a fine photographer. Yeah. What you may not know is that he has a keen interest in historical photographs, which we will learn about today. But before we begin, I want to say that we're planning a field trip to next Thursday to go to a wonderful folk art museum in Echehoa and to another museum celebrating Obagon and then to lunch by the sea. But Errol can tell you details about that. Okay, Umberto will do it. Now, first of all, Pam said that I was involved in this, and of course I am. But there are three on our committee. Umberto is one of the three, Stephanie is the second, and I'm the third. And we're the photo committee. We're trying to collect and archival images, normally digital, because we don't have an archival library. The Cultural Institute of Sonora does, and we're trying to work with them if we can get actual pictures that can be uh, preserved. So I call this a history of all the most true pictures. This picture was taken between 1900 and 1904. And part of the investigation comes from looking at a landmark and deciding uh, if you don't have the actual information on the back, as we often don't. And you can see that in the left-hand corner where the kiosk is now, there was a fountain. The kiosk was put in in 1904. So we know that it was before, anyway, the kiosk. The other thing that we know for sure is that City Hall was finished in 1899. We know the jail, or 1899, we know the jail uh, up on uh, the Loma de Guadalupe was finished in 1889. And these landmarks help us to date the pictures. And uh, so we'll start with that and I'll talk more about it. Now, our mission is to collect historic photographs from multiple sources for the purpose of making high resolution scans. And, and sometimes it means re-photographing the image. Sometimes we can use a regular scanner. We want to document in writing as much information as we can get about each picture. We will store and have stored uh, these images on an external hard drive and in the future, several hard drives uh, in our uh, live research library. And we'll make them available to groups or individuals that are interested in the history of Alamos. And one of my goals is to have exhibitions. The last one that uh, was here in the museum in Alamos was in 2016. And we didn't have that much to do with it. Uh, this was a picture. They had pictures and captions. Uh, Tony in the museum, Tony Estrada, and our cronista, Juan Carlos Ogi Valderrama, uh, put this together. This is the picture, actually, of a building that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, it was opened in 1903. It is the, the rostro or the slaughterhouse. There's a barrio by that name now, but of course, no building. It was color. It's really an impressive picture. We don't have that in our archives, but we'll, uh, we're looking anyway to get it. But this exhibit was in the, during the Pueblo Magico Festival in August, 2016. We hope to have more things like that. Past projects of the committee were illustrations, as Pam mentioned, of our book. Uh, we have some 50 uh, images from almost history that are there in, in the book, uh, including on the left is a publicity uh, photograph for advertising marriages in Alamos in the 1950s. And the one on the right was a street celebration at around the turn of the century. And I'll talk more about that later. Also the uh, past project with the pictures in city hall, where we re-photographed 65 pictures of the Presidentes, the mayor of Alamos. Uh, those pictures are now on display in the brand new Galeria de Presidentes, which the city made when we uh, completed the project. 
that's me doing the work there to re-photograph the pictures. And that's the way that it looks now. It is gorgeous. If you ever have an opportunity to get up on the second floor, climb your way up there, um, you can go into the mayor's office and they'll let you in if the door is locked. We're quite proud of that. It's the kind of thing the History Association wants to do is to have, uh, whether it's art or plaques or information available to the public to help everyone, visitors or local residents understand the history. Now, back to the pictures of the mayors, uh, there's a great deal of history within them. On the left, Bartolome e Almadi Salido was a national picture, uh, a fixture in Mexico, and he was the one that uh, designed and built the original Las Felicias, which went into a ruin, and then some 100 years later, I knew Lisa Franklin, an American, actually 1956, uh, she reworked it into where it is today. All of the early mayors were named Almada in one way or another. Uh, Antonio B. Almada, Antonio Almada. Now, uh, Quirino Corbala was um, present for more terms than any other mayor, starting in 1871 and going all the way to 1893. And because he had so many tour terms, uh, you can understand he was a part of the great change in Alamos during the Porfiriato, and that was during the period, uh, you know, of uh, the president of uh, Diaz, uh, Porfir uh, Porfirio Diaz, and so he was involved in many of the changes within Alamos. Uh, I love the picture of uh, Francisco Salido because it was really a mess when I got it and I was able to do the best to make it, I think, look, um, you know, pretty presentable. And we've got that on the wall. Uh, the Salazar family I'll mention before. And I like uh, Angel Almada Almada. You talk about Almadas, we've got them. And we actually had also a picture of his wedding in 1885. And, uh, you know, he married, you know, Josefa Urea Perón uh, at, at that time. And what a beautiful picture. Now, you've got to understand, in 1885, people didn't have cameras. Uh, if you had a picture taken, you were in a studio. And uh, Guaymas uh, in 1885 was the only studio that you could go to. And that was near to Alamos. Alamos did have a studio in the 1890s, but uh, that's the subject of a different presentation. Uh, Juan Carlos Ovi, uh, no, uh, Juan Casanova uh, with the Cultural Institute in Hermosillo uh, gave a presentation to us on the history of the early uh, photo studios in Mexico. Okay, Pedro uh, Salazar, another Salazar. I have another picture of him taken in the studio and it was taken at Mazatlan. And uh, that is Pedro and his brother. And another picture of Pedro from the family Salazar collection that the Cultural Institute of Sonora has. And of course he is of Alamos. I, I think this, first I love the picture. And Juan Carlos Olgi got me uh, this picture. It is a low res scan, not a not high res. But uh, Erman Bly Seldner operated the store, and it was called the Bly Hermanos. Uh, he had a store with his brothers at Guaymas first. He expanded to Alamos in the 1880s, I think 1881. And of course, his store is now the museum. El Museo Costumbrista de Sonora is the Bly Hermanos building. Now, the store was very profitable. He sold food, uh, not food, he sold clothes, mining supplies, kind of a general hardware store. But in 1915, Pancho Villa and the soldiers of Pancho Villa raided the Alamos. They looted his store and financially he was never able to recover, but and the store was closed in 1920, uh, 1919 or 20. Uh, it remained, the merchandise remained in the store until uh, the building was reopened after it was donated to the city by the family 
to be the museum and how wonderful if only I had had my camera walking into that building, unlocking the door and photographing something that had been untouched for 65 years. I mean, it just gives me chills to think about it. And of course, there was no photographer to do that uh, at that time. Okay, this is Hermann Bleisolner. He was mayor in 1911. We had many mayors during the revolutionary time. And this is a, a historic picture of the building. It's now the museum, uh, you know, the, uh, the Merceria de la Paz. Now, the Ureas are important because the Urea brothers are the ones who have founded Law Colorado up there on the mountain in that section of town. It was a distillery for Mescal, and they actually inherited that property from their cousin. And part of the inheritance was if one person disagreed with the terms of the inheritance, he was out the door. And these brothers never disagreed. <laughs> and they they got it going. They designed much of the uh, the uh, the machinery that was needed in the production. They bought additional land. They grew uh, the agave cactus, et cetera. So this is Miguel Urea and Joaquin S. Urea. Um, the Joaquin probably should be on the left uh, because he was mayor first, and then Miguel from 1912, and then again in the 20s. Now, we know them a little bit because Miguel was the father of uh, Otilia uh, Urea de Figueroa, who wrote a book that's on our webpage. And she writes about her early days in Alamos just before the revolution. And it was a wonderful time for the wealthy people of Alamos, but the revolution uh, wreaked havoc for the businesses and uh, during the time. And of course, Otelia left almost in the teens and went to the United States. And she came back and she was interviewed uh, by the History Association, uh, which she came back in about 1993, I think. And, uh, but she wrote the book and it's on uh, our webpage, almosthistoryassociation.org. And you can read the whole thing. The copyright expired uh, many, many years ago. But these, this is Miguel, and that is uh, the mother of Otelia. And I'd have to read it to get her name, but it's there. We're going to start with some pictures going back to uh, 1865. And I'll try to, the only thing I'm worried about is talking too much about them. So I'll try to limit myself. Uh, these three pictures are in a set. First, Antonio Rosales uh, was the general who was killed here in Alamos. Okay, uh, the building uh, to the right are five survivors of that battle in 1865. It was a picture taken in 1902. And underneath the sketch of General Rosales is the mint which was in operation here in almost from about 1860 until somewhere around 1915. And they did coins of silver and of copper. And the mint is right next door to us, or was. The building is uh, have, was destroyed in a flood, but rebuilt as the school, uh, Paulito uh, Verhan, the school right over here. And that's the building that we have uh, in the bottom. Uh, there and that's the only picture I know of uh, that shows that building. The reason the building is in the picture is because that's where the battle, uh, the clash had started, uh, was right there. Uh, Pascual Gaxiola uh, <coughs> Gomez La Madrid uh, was an important uh, figure in Alamos. The family home was at the Mansion Hotel over there, not not too far from us here. And uh, he had to leave almost during the political struggles of the 1860s, as all of us know, in about 1861. Uh, and, um, and the emperor, Maximilian, uh, started his uh, reign of about uh, five years uh, before he was executed. And during that time, the uh, elected government of Benito Juarez, uh, there was a constant struggle and battle 
And uh, so anyway, many families just left Mexico. They went to Paris, he and his wife. He came back and died at the young age of, of about 32. But his grandchildren, which are here in this picture, and this was a picture in a book uh, taken with just a camera. It was not professionally copied. And I'd love to see the original copy so that we can do a better job, but still it does its purpose. Uh, but anyway, uh, Luz Gomez La Madrid is the lady standing in the back. She's the only one that married and produced offspring. And she actually married, um, you know, uh, Selner, uh, Herman Black Selner. She married him. They had one son. And uh, he was born somewhere, I think, 1912. It might be in there, but he died in 1983, but he was not living here in Alamos. So anyway, this is part of the Gomez Lamadri family. When you look at pictures, most of the pictures are families and it gives you a little history. Now here was a family gathering in Alamos. Uh, our cronista, Juan Carlos Olguin, got this picture. We have no information on it. And Juan Carlos it was saying how he's flabbergasted, no information. And uh, that's our history association at someday. Uh, we're going to find out the name of every one of those people, aren't we? We are going to find them out and uh, we're going to get down for record. And look at that picture, a wedding in the 19th century. Can you imagine the white gloves uh, of the, uh, of the, I guess the groom standing there, the hats, oh, it just, you just wonder. You know, there's, it's been written. I don't want to get started in the story, but the Alamos, uh, the, the wealthy in Alamos were extremely cultured um, a group of people and, and you can kind of uh, see that. Now, we'll, we'll move on with buildings. Uh, the uh, Hospital de Jesus was built in 1861. And this is now a private hotel. It's owned by the Camacho family of Mexico City and Sinaloa. And I got the name there later. But anyway, it was a very good hospital at this time. The money came uh, from uh, the Almadas and uh, Jesus Antonio Almada. And then the uh, uh, Urea family uh, also generously uh, provided, donated money, Miguel Urea, and they expanded the property. They had iron beds. They had the latest uh, in hospital equipment at that time. And one of the doctors was mentioned, Alfonso Ortiz Reyes. Now I have a picture of, uh, you know, uh, Ortiz Reyes. Reyes, but I don't think it's really the doctor who was quite famous that practiced uh, in the hospital. This was a 1955 picture. And uh, if you walk up here behind the hacienda, you can get a picture today. Another, you know, pictures, names, people. This is the mother of Maria Felix. Um, you know, um, Josefa uh, Guareña Rosas. And um, she lived until 1971, but uh, she got married in 1901 and in 1914, uh, her daughter Maria Felix was born. And she lived either uh, here or in Kiriego, depending there's property there. And the two nuns are her sisters. Uh, she went to the United States, uh, stayed in the United, the two nun sisters stayed in the United States the rest of their lives. But she came back uh, to Alamos. And, and now look at her face closely and see if you see a resemblance to that face. I have trouble uh, seeing the resemblance, but maybe if she were dressed the way Maria Felix was and had the lighting and the hairstylist that she had, uh, she might have been there, uh, looked the same. Um, Maria Josefa Mont Terminel. Uh, she was born in 1885, right here in Alamos, and she got married, um, you know, I think it was, it says there in 1912, um, and what a picture. I mean, you see these pictures and you just, you just, wow, wow. And, uh, but in 1912, in 1913, um, she gave birth and 19, died, 19 days later, 
she died of tuberculosis. And so uh, her life was very short. Um, now, this is from the Salazar collection. This is Maria Boers. And of course, we know the Boers Center and the Boers family, but there's more than one Maria Boers. So I'm having trouble figuring out. The picture is dated 1878. And this came, of course, from the Salazar family. And this was a picture that, uh, that she sent that Maria uh, sent to, uh, let's see, what is it, Rafaelita uh, Salazar. And, um, you know, from, and the picture was taken, we've got it in Mazatlan. So that's on the back. To the right is what is on the back of the picture. So we know the studio where it was taken. Now the museum has another picture of the same gal but I don't have it within our archives. Now we do have Maria R. Boers, and this picture was dated 1882, and it was taken in California, in Santa Cruz. So, um, you know, and she sent it to the same. These were pictures that were sent to uh, Rafaelita Salazar, and they're always saying, oh, I'm sending a picture so you won't forget me. Now, this picture is in the museum, and it's generally assumed that it was after the flood um, during, I think, 1879. And, but it, it couldn't have been, because if you look at the picture in the center, you see the jail. And the jail was built in with 1889. I know you were. I knew you it was built in 1889, so the picture had nothing to do with the flood. The arroyo has a lot of water, but it's nothing to do with it. The other thing that we have, you see the Alameda, the trees in the Alameda. Do you see the, um, you know, the Mercado? No. The Mercado was done in 1899. So therefore, we know the picture was somewhere in that period. And this goes on all the time to people that are looking to document pictures that have no documentation with them. And I wish we had a better copy of this. Uh, I could recopy the one in the museum, but it wouldn't look much better. Uh, this is the uh, train station. There's nothing left of it today. You know where it is. There's the road, the Feta Padilla Road out uh, to the north of town. And that's where the station was. And the track was opened in 1908, and on our webpage, Juan Carlos Olguin has a beautiful story about the first train coming to Alamos in 1908. And of course, it was like 12 hours late. You know, it's the whole the, the whole story. There's a bit of humor in it, and all. But um, this is the only picture uh, we have. We have a copy, but the only picture uh, that I've seen of the train station. It's also in the museum. Now these were kind of publicity pictures. There's several of them. And um, I think that's Craig Fisher out there standing with those kids. Uh, 19, 1910, uh, but it's looking uh, towards the governor's mansion to the right, it's Comercio Street. And uh, up uh, the bishop's house is up there. And let's go on. Oh, a first communion in our church. And Juan Carlos wrote about how disappointed he was with what has happened to the church altar, the front of the church, since the time that picture was taken in the early 1900s. And it was beautiful. And, and look how many kids uh, were having their first communion on that day. The best first communion picture that we have is this one. And this one was not in Alamos. It's from the Salazar family collection. And it's in Sonora, but we don't have information, but what a picture. Now, this is the City Hall building shortly after it was completed. And I got this picture from the City Hall, an actual, uh, an actual print, which I recopied, and uh, which and that's what we're trying to get our actual prints to recopy. Now, the Central Plaza in Alamos has existed since the town existed, which was uh, 186, or I mean, 1683, uh, more or less. That's the official date given is 1683, but there's questions, 1683, but there's questions about that. There was always a plaza and there was always a church, but the original church was adobe. And we know we've got stories about 
when the uh, current church was built, they actually built it around the Adobe church and, and took the Adobe out through the door or whatever. I don't know how they did it. But um, anyway, this was the laying of the current plaza, uh, which was around uh, somewhere in the 1890s. And that's, of course, the, the old Hotel Alamos, uh, which there are many stories about. And this one I talked about. And this was the, uh, the centennial of the birth of Juarez in 1906. And you can see a plaza over there, pretty well uh, done. And this must have been a float in the parade uh, led by the horses and carriage. Um, I wish I'd have had a camera then to photograph it. This picture is on the cover of Juan Carlos Holguin's book about the Porfiriato and Alamos role in it. And we know very little information except we can see City Hall there. And it's early 1900s, there's no cars, there's just horses and wagons. And it was a celebration. And in fact, the photographer had to be on top, perhaps of the, the old Robles house over there looking down. And if you can see it, all the people, if you look closely, are looking at the cameras. And the shutter speeds at that time, they needed about a second or you'd get a blur. So this was a planned picture. And it's a beautiful picture, and I wish I had the original that we could scan it and, and make it sharper for display. Uh, this picture is when the kiosk was inaugurated in 1904 and on September the 15th uh, during the uh, Independence Day uh, celebration. You can see the, uh, the wealthy of Alamos there in chairs. I think they're the same chairs that are in City Hall that we sat on. I think they are. But anyway, they're sitting on chairs there, and then uh, the people at the bottom of the picture, uh, the uh, the laborers and whatever, the workers of Alamos. And a great, great shot. This was in 1906, and it shows the kiosk as it was at that time. And you also see that the streets were pretty much level with the plaza, and that changed sometime uh, in the 19th. 1940s, and I don't have any pictures or dates on that. A uh, street vendor uh, right outside the uh, the bishop's house, and um, this again, this picture I think was sold, um, you know, in a set like the postcards were popular. I'm not sure. This is definitely, uh, you know, this was called 1910, and we have other not didn't put in for me other part of Warren Street. Uh, looking the other way at that time. President Obregon in 1924, and we'll be going to the museum in his hometown of Guatemala uh, next week. President Obregon is seated. Uh, the picture is damaged in several spots and part of his face is covered. But um, you, this is our Palacio. This is where we watched events at the uh, uh, the festival last week, and he was there were six sitting presidents that have come so far to Alamos, and the last was Amlo in 2019. Um, but uh, there were there were many others, and Juan Carlos has those documented. The market in 1925, it looks primitive, but they've got vegetables, fruit. Um, you know, it was functional. Uh, I look at the uh, the roof, and uh, that's certainly not like that uh, anyway today. This is a publicity, the, you know, a promotional picture of some sort, certainly posed. It's on Madero Street, and um, the current uh, Marat's house is to, is to the right. Uh, if we know Madero now, we know it goes the other way uh, than then. Um, this is... Um, more like in the 1920s, early 1930s. We don't have documentation, but it's it's a great, a great picture. Uh, we've got four pictures put together here of the Alameda. The first in the upper left was in 1908. The others were somewhere in the 1930s, including the, the kiosk in the center, which uh, of course is still there. This picture is, it's undated and it it begs a lot of, I mean, there are many questions that are asked. The radio tower, 
Um, Jim Swinker uh, said once to our history association, the radio tower was constructed by the Germans to eavesdrop on the Americans during World War II. But of course, that's not quite right. It could have been World War I. Uh, we, we gave a presentation here on the Zimmerman papers, <laughs> my pen, I guess, uh, where the foreign minister of Germany in World War I offered the Mexican uh, president uh, that they would help them return the lands that were lost in the Mexican-American War in the 1840s if Mexico would declare war on the United States. So I think the tower was related to World War I and they were eavesdropping here. Now, when it was taken down, and the reason that I know it couldn't have been the 1930s uh, is uh, because is because uh, look at the, the ruins of the governor's palace. It was still complete. Now the governor's palace was built in the 1820s when Alamos was the government of Western Mexico. They had a uh, West Day and the full title. It included uh, Sinaloa, it included Alam uh, uh, Sonora, it included uh, New Mexico and et cetera. It was a large area, but that was a hundred years, um, you know, that was still pretty much intact. And I think it was in the 1920s or maybe a little bit earlier. Uh, this was uh, dead, this was dated in 1947. And you can see what has happened to the governor's palace uh, since that time. And um, then this picture, this is right outside the street here in Takabaya and uh, the old bridge that was over and there were several old bridges like that in town. And of course, the boroughs carrying Lania was a, a popular subject for photographers in the 20th century. Um, this old bridge is, yeah, I don't know where this bridge is. We haven't identified it, uh, but it was in the time. Now I've got three pictures of boroughs and firewood. Okay, here's number one. And uh, Okay, that's looking toward the old Tesoros. What street is that? Um, somebody here will know the name. Uh, but anyway, it's a very prominent part of Alamos. Uh, there in the plaza. I don't think they have firewood. Sorry about that. Uh, I thought they did. This borough certainly does. And this was in the 1950s. But at one time through Kissing Alley and toward the plaza, these boroughs we're bringing firewood for sale uh, for the, the people with fireplaces of Alamos. Kind of as an interesting note, uh, prior to the 20th century, these homes did not have fireplaces. And it makes you wonder on these cold January mornings, how they kept warm. Um, this is from 1952 article. And again, it shows the firewood. And this was published by uh, the state of Sonora as a publicity thing. And they, they used some older pictures and took uh, some newer ones. There are no photo credits or dates. So again, uh, we know the publication was 1954. So we know the pictures were taken anyway before that. Um, whoops, back. this is the second floor of the Alamos Hotel. And the second floor is still there. Uh, but it's inaccessible, and Anna Maria uh, wouldn't let me up there to, to take a picture when I tried a few years ago. Um, this is because of safety. <laughs> and um, this is, um, of course, down Comercio Street, headed toward the church. And maybe Craig is in that picture, too. Right? And then we have the ruins of the, uh, the governor's palace. And uh, again, uh, the street right there looking towards the Tesoros. And then we have the, uh, the Almada house and the plaza in the 1950s. And that's, I think a 1953 Cadillac, uh, the first one. And look at that Woody back there. Uh, there's some great cars. I, I wish uh, they were still parked out there. Uh, but but they're not. Now we're going to get to some pictures from the 50s 
And we have many, many more pictures and I have to limit my time. And uh, so far I'm doing okay. But uh, this was up on top of the, uh, the Loma Guadalupe. The jail is to the right of the picture. To the left is the Pila uh, that was uh, done for water storage in 1895 when Ramon Corral uh, was the uh, governor of Sonora. And of course the Corral family is still here. And in fact, I knew very well Ramon Corral's grandson uh, who passed away a few years ago uh, at age 95, and Ramon Crowell's great-grandson in 2003 ran against Eduardo Brewers uh, for the governorship of Sonora. So we had two almost families facing each other on different political parties for the June 2003 gubernatorial election, and of course Brewers won, and uh, I'm not, I have not kept in touch with uh, Ramon Corral in the forest to see what he's doing. Uh, pictures of the 50s out, outside, I'm sure, Bartolome School. Um, shops during the, the, we had so many shops at that time, pictures taken. Uh, we don't have identification. Of course, we know, we know where that is. Uh, neat picture, uh, but we don't know, we know it's an almost, but we don't know much else. Uh, repairing Lucia de Deva. Uh, you know, during during the 1950s, uh, the Boers Center um, during anyway the 1950s, and it looks pretty similar uh, anyway today. And uh, this is the um, anyway part of the Mercado, uh, which was taken. Now those that that had captions like that, uh, these were def and numbers. These were definitely cards. Uh, anyway, for uh, for sale, and I should have pulled that picture over. But what a great shot with the horse, and then the old pickup uh, there in the background. Now the Robles, I'm, I've got several on the Robles family. Raimundo Robles was elected mayor in 1952, and this was his inauguration. And I got this from the Robles family. I got a real print, and was able to do a good scan. Uh, the third from the right is Levant Alpha. And uh, I was able, and Rhea helped me to identify most of the people in the picture. Uh, Raimundo is in the white pants, uh, one, two, three, four, five, five from the right. And, right. Huh? Uh, the, the right of the picture. The right of the picture. If I refer to directions, I'm doing it from anyway the picture. So he's he was a young man then. He was mayor from 1952 to 1955. And there is the official picture we have in City Hall. Uh, there's Ramundo with his family, and there's are four shots of the business that he had at one time. The Robles Shoe Company sold shoes in a for sale area. And they had 100, 100 employees at one time. By the 1970s, the business had pretty well dried up. And there's still a few robuses that, that are making uh, leather uh, shoes of one type or another, but uh, not very many. Now, according to uh, Jose Robles that, that uh, provided me with these pictures, he said the problem was really that Raymond, though, uh, didn't have a distant sense and did not keep the business modern. And, and that's the story with a lot of businesses, and maybe that's true. Uh, this is uh, Raymundo then in the 1980s. He died in 1993 uh, here in Alamos. Uh, our neighbor and a friend of many of us, uh, Rafael Arena Swan, uh, gave me this picture uh, to the left is his great grandparents uh, at their marriage in uh, 1916. And uh, Filiberto uh, Young, Young was the, uh, the gentleman. And then Rafa's grandfather is on the pedestal, uh, you know, in the picture taken a few years later. Now, these are the kinds of things we're dying to get from people connected to Alamos. Something like this is so important, especially with Rafa, because he is kind of a key into 
the Chinese Mexican community uh, here in Alamos and uh, that I have been studying for, for many years. Yeah, in 1931, the Chinese were expelled. And I, I need to talk to Rafa. Did he get back into town? To, he's been in the Yucatan. He's back. I'll need to, to get the full story anyway of that. But 1931, the Chinese were expelled from Sonora. And the movie that we're going to show on February 20th called Sonora is about that expulsion. So don't miss it. Um, a good place to find pictures. Now, um, you know, the museum is excellent. Originally, I thought we ought to meet in the museum. We'd walk around and look at pictures, and then I'd give a slideshow. But it's much easier to meet here, uh, where Umberto is, and he can help me uh, pull off these presentations. But I took a few pictures in the museum. Uh, there's so many different displays that they have. And this is on Ortiz Torado. And uh, we, I have none in my collection or our History Association's collections, any pictures of him. And this is Ortiz Torado for an opera role and that he was playing. And this would have been in uh, the like, uh, 1920s because his music career uh, began in the 1920s, as did his medical career. And he is will be the subject of a great, great presentation at some time in the future. Uh, I don't have the information. I should have collected the information, but what a portrait. And if only I could get an original picture and make it. Now, this is, um, I've got to the right a page from Ophelia, um, Maria de Figueroa's book. And to the left, it shows uh, the mule path uh, going up to, uh, you know, to La Sierra. And this was, they said, every Sunday or every weekend, people of Alamos would go up to where it was a little cooler in the summer days. And that was a procession. And uh, we have a, a very rough copy. This was in the museum. Uh, more people. Now, the one, uh, the second from the lower right, uh, right up there, is Maria Gores. And that picture I don't have, and I want to get it. Uh, it's, a, it's a much better picture than the one I have. And oh, uh, to the very left at the bottom is Otilia Urea de Figueroa. And her mother is the one just to her right. And I don't have all the identifications, but they're there in the museum. And I encourage you, uh, I know all of us have been to the museum many, many times, but I encourage you to make a trip back and pay your 10 pesos or whatever, and just look at the pictures uh, that are there in the museum. Uh, more of the museum pictures, we have that. Now, I'm going to end this by talking about my dream, and that is in gathering new material. Uh, this is the copy of an album uh, from the Salazar family that the Cultural Institute currently has. And they have scanned, uh, Juan Casanova has scanned every picture in that album. Now, it's an old album. And uh, let's see, I did, oh, I should, anyway, I, I should show how the pictures were, but they were in bad condition. But I didn't include that in there. Uh, anyway, there is uh, Maria Brewers, and I've used that before. All we know on this is two brothers. What a great, great shot. And uh, that was taken in Guaymas. Most of your uh, studio uh, photographs were taken in Guaymas. This is the Reyes uh, uh, de Ortiz, but I don't think it's the famous doctor, uh, but it could be. Uh, but this is part of the family. And that this is from the Salazar family collection. Uh, this is an interesting story to me. This is 1881. Says Sarah That's all I know. Um, the picture was taken in Santa Cruz. I got a letter between five and ten years ago, an email uh, from someone that said their name was Wilson. They knew they had uh, ancestors here around Alamos and in Sonora. Could I be of any help? Well, of course I couldn't, I, I had no idea. 
Um, Jim Powell here is very good at, uh, you know, tracing back family roots and things. But I wrote back and I said, well, I will look and see. Well, the Salazar family, here we have Sarah Wilson. Is that the Wilson family? I don't know. Do I still have the email address? I don't know. So anyway, these things, uh, things come to you at different times, and uh, I hope that is the Wilson. Love the picture of the two sisters. Uh, goes well with the two brothers there over there. Uh, Dolores uh, uh, El de Moreno and children. That's all we know. Uh, they were connected to the Salazar family. And uh, the Colego de Sonora. Um, we still have a Colego de Sonora. I don't know if that's the one. Um, you know, a graduating class, 1920, or any of the help that we can get the help of people here in Alamos uh, to uh, give us their pictures. We know there are books like the Salazar family uh, gave that are right here in town. Can we go through them? Uh, we won't take them permanently. We want to scan them and have the pictures for our library. I'll take questions. Yes. It helps. Any picture helps uh, because it has clues for identification. Uh, your house uh, was first, in my recollection, in 1978, Diane Carpenter. Uh, and her husband Bob Evans. Uh, does Diane have the picture? I have not specifically asked her. But see, we trace it back. Diane bought you. And um, Rob's house um, was owned by a family in the Hawaii. And that goes back as far as, as I know. But all of these houses in our neighborhood have histories going back more than 20 years. Okay, uh, thank you all for being here. I want to remind you, next week, we got an exciting day tomorrow, but we'll need for you to sign up. Uh, it's uh, it's going to, we're leaving at 8 o'clock by bus uh, and going to make a window, and we will go to first edge over to um, the Museum of the Folk Art. Then we go to uh, the Museum of Alvaro Old Bernard in Guadalajara. Very nice museum. Uh, Stephanie and Karen and I went through it this week and us uh, got some wonderful stuff. Then we'll uh, go out to have lunch in Pablon Pito. And all the time, Stephanie will be providing this history of the landscape and the environment and, uh, you know, of, of Sonora. I mean, she's lived here so many years. She's a great person. Okay. I just want to say that if you have paid your dues, if you Member of, a member of the Alamo Sister Association this season. I'm here with change, but I have your name and your email address. If you don't thank you. And thank you, Eric. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.